Now this is house number two. Yeah, and the the house that we're looking at does not include the windows on the, at the top there on the on the other side of the greenery. It's this house is basically a stick built double wide trailer. <laughs> That's the only way I can describe it. Okay. And so my parents bought it for basically what we sold the other house for about $20,000. Okay. And Redfin estimate is 3 million. The last time it sold was in 2013 and it sold for 1.76 million. <laughs> In 2013. In, in 2013. <laughs> and, Those people aren't moving. They haven't moved yet, have they? <laughs> no. Well, the interesting thing about this, the, the, that, that second house, was my parents had owned the vacant lot that it was built on uh, right after World War II. And they were buying up uh, oil lease or oil lots that were only 25 feet wide. And in that section, all these lots were just 25 feet wide. And so they would buy them. And when they got two that were uh, congruent to one another, in other words, adjacent to one another, they would combine it and sell the 50 foot wide lot for about 10 times more of their investment. So. But this is one lot that they, they had never been able to get that other lot to, to uh, so they sold it off cheap and we bought it back uh, 20 years later with a house on it. <laughs> so guys, if you are thinking about moving to Manhattan Beach, California, this is what you're looking at. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Three million dollars for that house on Manhattan Beach, California. I've been to Manhattan Beach, but isn't that something? We last sold one million seven hundred sixty thousand dollars in May of 2013. So, Bruce, it's just another example of what if you had kept it? <laughs> what if your parents had kept it, right? Like I said, it'd be better if we'd kept the second house, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, maybe even the house that you sold when your mom passed away, that house might have been good to keep too. <laughs> yeah, well, I couldn't get my brother to agree to that. <laughs> I know that was the only problem with that, but that you 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 did pretty good with that one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we sold that one for uh 500,000. Yeah. 500,000, uh, guys. So, just think about it. Wherever you are, real estate is going to go up. There, it's always the law of supply and demand. It's always the law of inflation. Things are always going to go up. And as long as people, as you can find a customer, and I always like to remind people about, you know, that concern about, well, people are moving out of this area. Well, that's a macro conversation. But the only conversation you need to think about is a micro conversation. And that micro conversation is, do you have a customer? Can you generate a customer? Think house monster. Think By the way, this picture of the house, whoever took it was standing in the street. <laughs> <laughs> So do you have a customer is the question. And always we want to encourage you to turn on the house monster, turn it on, get you a customer and then go about finding a property. And you can be the bank for that customer. Always remember that. And they can get the benefit of home ownership sooner or later. And you're the one bringing them that great opportunity. So stop being concerned about the price of, of real estate going up down or sideways and just always focus on the concept of getting a customer. Thank you, Bruce, for that great insight into real estate. And uh, I say always trust IP real estate uh, in the long run, you will win. Can anybody guess what IP is? Income producing. <laughs> 
So always trust income producing real estate in the long run, you will win. It might be the short run as well, but definitely the long run, there's no way you can't win uh, when you just get with it and stick with it.